Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of ours where our theme is mental health. And today actually marks World Mental Health Day. And we are very happy to have with us Ms. Chavi Tiwari, who is a clinical psychologist. So welcome, Chavi, and thank you for joining us again. Uh, thank you so much for calling me again, uh, Anushka. It, it's, a, it's, it's actually a very um, great day to be talking about mental health. So thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for calling me. Yes, thank you for joining us. And so, you know, we're going to get right into the conversation. Yeah. And today, actually, we'll be talking about the theme, of course. We'll start with the theme of uh, World Mental Health Day. Every year, there's a theme right. um, that revolves around because it's such a va vast topic. And there's so much to talk about. So the theme is this year is mental health for all, greater investment, greater access, relate, and you know, and that we will be relating it to even India's situation right now, right. you know, and in the current situation. So over to you, Chavi. Tell okay. us. <laughs> so, uh, like you mentioned, that every year there is a new theme. Um, for this year, uh, the theme is. Um, quite related to the pandemic situation that we are in, the crisis situation that we are in. And uh, because of the crisis situation, like um, people have lost their jobs, um, financially they are unstable, people have uh, lost love and dear ones, they themselves have suffered from COVID-19, um, mm -hmm. plus so many other instabilities. So we have seen a surge in mental illness in these past few months. So greater investment, greater access. They, uh, the theme has centered around uh, pandemic a lot because we, as mental health professionals, since um, 1992, since the conception of Mental Health Day, uh, every year, the first goal was just to just to spread awareness of mental health. That has been happening uh, even in India. But um, it's it's just that the we do not give mental health that much priority. Uh, it's always the physical health, which I'm not going to blame anyone because that's what we've been taught since we were children, that, you know, you should be healthy. But nobody tells us, you know, how are you feeling today emotionally? That's not what is taught to us since childhood. Nobody asks us about that. So what we want to spread uh, for this year is uh, we want to help individuals even in the most remotest of areas of India and world where you can you know easily access uh, mental health services uh, and so that by spreading awareness by getting access to that they will just automatically start investing in their mental health so in India in the past decade, there has been um, an increase in uh, mental health awareness, which can be reflected through um, the number of mental health professionals who are graduating every year. The institutes have increased the uh, at uh, national level, state level, district level, even in community level, awareness programs, uh, government programs, uh, camps. They've been, uh, they are being conducted every single year. So this is what we aim for, greater investment and greater access, which in itself will reduce the stigma, increase the awareness, and people will uh, be mentally and physically healthy. I think in the next 10 years, um, when we look back, we'll see that you know we've made a great change, even at the individual level. So that, I think yeah. that is the aim for this year. Yeah, no. And I think, you know, I mean, for everyone tuning in, I would like to say that Chavi actually did a session with us before on Instagram regarding um, World Suicide Prevention Day on that day. So we have talked a lot about this, but I think it's important for us to touch base on a few things, maybe on how people can really um, access um, mental health support. You know, so if you could just mention a few things that we can do as individuals, as parents, um, and seek out for mental health help? Okay. Um, I think the first thing comes from home. It's it's just something um, that how we speak about mental health at home. 
Uh, most of us are so, um, most of us are in denial. Most of us um, don't want to talk about it. Um, and and uh, we focus more on the physical symptoms, like uh, the child is not being able to pay attention. Maybe the child is naughty. Okay, the child doesn't want to study. Maybe the child is having a stomach ache every day before going to school. So, Jan ke kar raha hai. Okay, he just doesn't want to go to school. He just wants to stay at home and play. Maybe he's being bullied at home, at school. Mm -hmm. So it's the way we see mental health altogether. We should talk openly about it, and we should give that opportunity to our children as well as our elderly, as well as our um, you know our colleagues and you know uh, same age group peers that uh, it's, it's okay to speak about uh, mental health so the first thing comes from your home how open you are about it second is when you see that someone requires help and if you don't know enough information read it about read about it i know google is not a good source but it tells you about certain basics about these symptoms from there you can talk to your loved one and then seek professional help and at every district there are government hospitals there are doctors who also sit in private chambers we mm -hmm. there is access it's just that we have to um accept the fact that we might be um mentally unwell so first is to openly talking about it second is increasing your awareness and third is uh reaching out to the person who is suffering or reaching out to someone who you can trust about your illness and then later going for professional help because you shouldn't have to fight with this deal with it on your own we are there to help you i think i did i mentioned this in the last session as well we are there mm -hmm. for you um it's it's you should that's how you should uh, go about it these are i think these mm -hmm. are the steps that these are very basic steps that everyone can follow mm -hmm. and i think one thing that i've kept from you know our conversations is that it's okay to not be okay you know that sentence sticks has stuck to me and i feel that is something that we all can take in and really share with everyone around us you mentioned about um, you know talking openly with everyone is so important about it and sharing whatever your concern is and it's hard to do that of course you know i mean it's hard to um, be able to share experiences but it's very important so i really want to talk about how we can bridge that gap you know let's get right into it how can we bridge that gap um between parents and children or between elderly and like you know your children so if the older person in your house you know or if someone your grandfather your grandma your mother your father if the elders are feel, feel are going through you know mental uh, mental illness or if they need the support how can they communicate with their children and vice versa right mm -hmm. um, that's a very um, good uh, question that you've asked me uh, because mm -hmm. We see age groups as 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 separate age groups, but we at every age group we all suffer from mental illness. They might mm -hmm. uh, manifest as different symptoms. Uh, they might be different triggers for the um, illness, but we mm -hmm. all are vulnerable to mental health issues. So that's the first most important thing that we need to remember that we are all vulnerable. So mm -hmm. that. In itself helps us in bridge the gap to accept that we are all vulnerable. We might have certain triggers, certain stressors in life, which might uh, trigger the illness, and it might just manifest as different symptoms. So, mm -hmm. as adults, we have this um, conception, sometimes even misconception, that we have to take up responsibility for our children and for our parents. Yes, we do, but we need to understand them as individuals as well. So giving equal opportunity to the child as well as your parent. So when a child is mostly afraid is that my parents will not understand me. They might overreact and then I have to deal with their overreaction or they might just get angry with me that I am faking it. That is usually what children come up to us and say that, I tried and uh, I tried to tell my parents, but uh, they were like, uh, "You're being naughty. It's nothing like that. You're a child. You can't have something like this." So uh, 
giving them the opportunity to talk as well as take certain decisions about themselves that is also very important for children as well so uh, another thing that we notice when they come with children is that when they come to us most of the children don't even know uh, they've not been told by their parents that they're coming to a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist they might be told that you know um, um, you're going uh, to a to a tuition teacher or someone who's going to play with you who's going to talk to you they never tell them that you know you want you, you can talk about your uh, emotional problems and other problems so but when we ask the child you know where are you they like i'm in a hospital or i'm in a clinic uh, you're talking to me maybe you want to know more about so they know they are aware of it so it's very important how you again i'll go back to the thing how you talk about mental health so as um adults that is definitely your responsibility to make your child aware of it so that is in a way that bridges the thing but it's okay to be not okay right mm -hmm. it's not to have these um, so that's one thing that when we come to elders now elders have always been quite independent throughout their life so do they feel that if i talk about my mental illness i'll be either sent to an old age home or a psychiatric facility where i lose my independence or i'll have to be completely dependent on my children which i don't want to do i don't want to be a burden for them second thing is the most common um, one of the most common psychiatric illnesses is dementia or depression so it is believed that these are normal symptoms of old age bhul to jayenge right mm. that is but no there is a difference between uh, normal forgetting due to age and, and a clinical forgetting so that is also kind of misconception that people have so so you need to give your parents also opportunity to talk about their problems they have their own set of stressors so this is i think the gap is the same so the more you teach your children they will they will behave in the same way when they grow up and help you out when you have a psychiatric illness or a physical illness so it starts with an adult so they usually bridge the gap they and it's it's, it's actually the same giving opportunity to talk acceptance and seeking the right kind of treatment for the child as well as your parent i think that bridges the gap for both the three generations right no, i think that's so beautifully said because it just sounds like a circle you know like you have the circle of life it's just like that it's a chain you know and you have to start and like you said if you start young you know that that person is going to grow up to being the same to their kids so you know that's when the chain will become more consistently positive and will be the openness will start then so that's that's i think that's something beautifully said by you so um let's get to our next section which is the section that you know that we have prepared here is it's going to be sort of like a rapid fire because i feel um which where we're going to be talking about myths regarding mental health Mm -hmm. this is a topic uh, myths is something you know that i feel um is present in our society today and it's important to break those myths and let people know what the reality is what the truth is so i'm going to list out just a few uh, myths regarding mental health revolving around the topic and uh, chavi here will tell us the the truth the, yeah, the correct fact, and, yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So the first one that we have here is that people with mental illness are violent and dangerous. Yes. Um this is uh something that most of the um uh, individuals the clients who come to us uh, they especially their loved ones are scared about that. Uh because what happens is that we wait till the end for mm -hmm. any kind of illness to take part. So so it is the fact say that they are no more as violent as the normal population that it is true that uh people with mental illness are unpredictable they are dangerous they can become violent but it's actually between 3 to 7% of those population mm -hmm. and majority of the time they are more at risk to themselves than to other people the suicide is a risk to themselves so mm -hmm. that is more common than homicide next is 
they are more likely to be victims of um uh, violence and crime than they themselves being uh, perpetrators so you can see yeah. that um, social media movies uh, always sensationalizes uh, mental illness they don't do that with physical illness very few physical illnesses which is unique which is new they will sensationalize that as well so you will see uh, movies in which a person is chained is kept in a um, you know a secluded place where uh, you're just given food pick ke food de rahe ho you know because or else they'll come and bite you or they'll they'll just shout yeah. at you this is how we see um, yeah. media and movies portraying it but uh, mm-hmm. that is not true even the most violent of um, mental illnesses if you treat them if the treatment if it is caught early diagnosed early if you treat them with both medication and therapy together they will be able to regulate all their emotions so this is a complete myth that all of them are violent when you see someone next to you maybe that person is suffering from some mental illness and you have no idea because they are as productive and as active as you are so that's a complete yeah. myth okay so the second one that we have here is psychiatric medications are bad this is something we ah, hear a lot yes yeah. so this is another one this this is also prevalent among mental health professionals okay, okay. even they are like you know when they're talking to their clients um they'll be like up counseling karwa lijiye you know you should go for therapy um they may not suggest a uh, medication themselves it has been seen that you know even when um mental health professionals when they suffer from some mental illness they may not opt for a uh, psychiatric you know uh, medication in the first go they also have to be mm-hmm. convinced so there is a myth that you know you'll either get addicted to it or uh, these are pills are just a way of you know uh, not dealing with your problems so you just you know pop a pill and you just zone out and then you'll be fine the next day but it does not work that way yes psychiatric medications are necessary for certain illnesses but again with therapy it can work wonders and eventually there are many mental illnesses where eventually the doses are reduced and they are stopped so yeah. they are not bad for your health they are not addictive they are not uh, happy pills or pills to just uh, you know keep you zoned out from the real problems they are actually mm-hmm. very helpful in balancing out the neurotransmitter imbalance the chemical imbalances because of which mental illnesses take place so please go ahead and consult a psychiatrist if you feel that you are having emotional dysregulation and other psychiatric symptoms yeah okay all right perfect so the third one that we have here is seeking help for mental illness will lead to being ostracized and make symptoms worse right yeah so the myths that we're talking about these this mm-hmm. is what people, these are what people are afraid of yeah. so when a person it's, it's first of all it's so difficult to live with such an illness every day is a struggle every second is a struggle waking up for some people waking up uh, facing a new day is a struggle so when people stigmatize when people discriminate because of that it becomes tough for someone to open up like you mentioned in the start of the session mm-hmm. that it's not easy to talk about it so when a person comes to us with you know i always tell them you're so brave right you're coming up to talk about your strengths to talk about your achievements success it's easy but to talk about your weaknesses to talk about your failures is very tough so you're already in the right direction the first step you've already crossed now comes to the perceptions of other people we can all we should always be aware of what other people are saying but that should be your strength because once you start seeking help you are empowering yourself you're spreading awareness you are encouraging you're a model to other people that go ahead and seek help it's okay so by doing this we are changing other people's uh, perception of mental illness so yes you are stigmatized you are discriminated against but that is changing and mm-hmm. one should always open up and seek help 
because yeah. that is going to help you adjust better to the world around you and the people around you yeah. oh, that was that was so well said <laughs> i'm just absorbing everything that you're saying because it's i think you know it it is so important to acknowledge and to accept and also to talk about these things you know to talk about it and have conversations about such things about mental health about these myths so um the next one that we have here is um people with mental health conditions cannot work and also mental health problems are a sign of weakness right so um they are like i mentioned they are as productive and as active like anyone else yes because of the symptoms they may have difficulty in initiating tasks in doing their regular day to day activities but it is it has been researched upon that when they go to work the work in itself the employment in itself helps in dealing with the daily struggles of mental illness so they are motivated they are punctual uh, their work productivity is good but all that we require is a healthy work environment where they are accepted um, and they are integrated into it because they can work as well as anyone else that you see in your workplace you might have someone in your workplace who is suffering from it daily but it does not show in their work so i remember when i was doing my mphil training in my first year mm -hmm. so uh, we had to go to the outdoor patient department uh, where we used to sit with the psychiatrist used to observe the patients that used to come so i remember this lady um she came and she had suffered great loss in family uh, because of which she had stopped working she was the only earner uh, and she stopped working so i remember the um, the doctor who was uh, attending to the patient he was like you know you need work i'll give you work and um, he just said he called people he's like you know see if there is a uh, some post available in the hospital if she can start working and um so i've done my training and i'm working in the same hospital i meet her every day and uh, she remembers me i remember her and we sh we now we share stories and you know she recently started her own family and she's working great she is having her medications but she's doing well so all we need is a motivating environment where we can just integrate them and um, they'll be um, that work as a moral support for them so no they can work and uh, they can actually be better than you you may not know yes. <laughs> amazing so the next think, one uh, that we have to talk yes. about weakness i think i missed that one out uh, weakness oh yeah weakness I, yeah yes so again it's quite related to uh, medication and you know where you know you're feeling um, you know feeling down have a medication zone out and you know that's because you're weak you can't do anything without it but it takes a lot of strength to deal with it every single day it's just the opposite it's not a weakness mental illness is at the end of the day it's an illness just like um a diabetic uh, patient needs insulin every day um has to maintain a lifestyle it's the same thing for a person with mental illness uh, you will never ask a person who is in the wheelchair has just had an accident is on the wheelchair cannot walk so what are you doing you can't walk get up and start walking you can't tell that because you know that it's because of the illness or because of the injury they're not able to do it so it's the same with mental you can't just ask someone who is in severe depression who is not being able to get up get up uh you're you're doing it on purpose you want attention that's what is told so it's not a weakness it takes a lot of courage to uh fight it every single day uh the stories we hear of success or failure every every story reflects how much courage and bravery it requires for an individual to fight with it every day so no it is not a weakness it's a complete myth mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. So the next one that we have here is that mental health problems are permanent. I think you touched based on this, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. When I mentioned about you know the doses are reduced, so right. it is not like that. You know, you've been diagnosed today. You just have to suffer from it, you know, throughout your life. 
Uh, no. Every experience is different. There are mm-hmm. certain psychiatric illnesses that require treatment for longer periods of time, even uh, till the end of time. It might require. Okay, mm-hmm. depending on you know, you might have stressors or triggers, and the symptoms might increase. And again, with treatment with therapy, again they normalize. So some people have episodes like depression, mania. They like episodes where in between it's normalized. Some people uh, have to go through it uh, for a few months, like post-traumatic stress disorder. They've had a traumatic experience, and after that the symptoms have triggered so with therapy and with medication after a few months or years the medication is slowly uh, terminated so it's not permanent so what we tell our uh, patients who you know clients who come to us they'd say that you know um, do i have to suffer with throughout our year, throughout our life so what we say that we are all vulnerable we can all have this symptom even i can have it one day but what you're doing with therapy is life skills so right now what you're learning you can use it throughout your life and it's not just for someone who's having mental illness it's for everyone who has negative thoughts so it is not all illnesses are permanent there are some which require treatment where there will be good phases as well good uh, times as well but um, with the right treatment they can be managed really well and also treat it to at least 100%. Okay, got it. Yeah. This this is very informative I think for a lot of us because there's so many little details, you know, that we don't tend to look at even when we're googling or when we're searching and we just look at the bigger picture, but there's it's important to look at the bigger picture when you're just starting off to research about it, but it's important to know that these are the various layers to this vast topic, you know, and that one should be again open to learning about them and also um, encouraging others to learn about it yeah. and to talk yeah. about it. So that being said, our next one is um, there is no hope for mental people with mental health problems. Once a friend or family member develops mental health problems, he or she will never recover. I think we covered on this yeah. about how to that, similar yeah. to permanency of the illness. Right. Yes. OK, so let's go to the next one. Um, Oh, yeah. So therapy and self-help are a waste of time. Why bother when you can just take a pill? So I feel this is something that, you know, that we hear. I don't know. I mean, it's just it's something that is very interesting because you want to you're going you're either taking a pill or you're going for therapy and you don't know how to do you do both. It's just a confusing decision, I feel. Right. Um, Therapy and self-care takes effort you need to work on yourself but once Mm -hmm. you start reaping the um you know the results the positive results it just becomes a way of life positivity just becomes a way of life so Mm -hmm. medication is necessary for some for some people it's just necessary for survival like i mentioned that you know waking up in the morning it's tough so sometimes it's required for survival sometimes medication helps us in uh, recovering from the illness itself so it aids in therapy and therapy aids in medication they work together because a lot of time what happens is that when we are in that um, we are in the, the thought process or that emotional dysregulation uh, it gets very difficult to even uh, sit and talk to someone okay they just so much so many thoughts are coming they're physically so tired that they can't even open their mouths okay so for them medication is required so that they can uh, you know phys- physic- physiologically they feel better and they come for therapy Okay, so therapy is something that requires effort. So they come to us and they tell us, remove all our negative thoughts. I don't want to think any negativity, but that's not what you can't do like that. Negativity is going to be there, but it's your it's your own um, priority, your personal decision to accept the negativity, but at the same time try to look at the positive sides as well. So self care is tough therapy is needs um, effort but once like i mentioned once you get into the flow it just becomes a way of life and things just become easier for you 
Mm-hmm. And I think you know, self care and just talking to people and getting that help is something that we all should um, embed in our lives. You know, I think it's something that I I'm just thinking. You know, there are certain things that we shouldn't we shouldn't say that oh this is a mental health problem. You know, like that idea is there too a lot, which which I hear, and which is like oh okay I I cannot have negative thoughts because. Um, you know, I don't have any kind of illness as that. Yes, yes. As that, as that, that in itself is a myth. How we yeah. use, use the labels like, are you depressed? Yeah. Depression mm-hmm. is a clinical disorder. You can't just say someone that you're depressed. You don't mm-hmm. know my life story. Or you're like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, panic attack. Ho rahe. Are nahi oh. ho sakta, so panic attack nahi ho raha hai. So it's the way mm-hmm. we label things. So this works in two ways. Once you labelize, you start thinking like that. And other way, it's yeah. like I don't have anything. I can't have negative thoughts, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to do self care. People don't even do that, so they start using alcohol, drugs, because they they are mm. easier to uh, find. Uh, you know, relaxation. It's it's like uh, the needs and urges are you know either numbed or they just mm. met. So you you're very mm. correct about saying that. You've just you yourself mm. have uh, talked about a myth. today yeah yeah because you know, it just it just makes me realize you know you have all these conversations with people and you know i mean i take time out to do my self care routine and you know and always right. because there if there's so much going on in your life it's okay to not be okay it's okay to <laughs> yes it's okay to you know go to a therapist and just talk your thoughts out even if it's once in your lifetime or whatever it is it's okay it's not you shouldn't be labeling things like that mm-hmm. for uh, you know that that again brings back to the point that um why should you isolate people who are diagnosed with mental health problems you know why should they, that that itself makes them separate mm-hmm. that itself stigmatizes the whole thing you mm-hmm. know so i think yeah this is this is amazing <laughs> and uh, the next thing we have here the last one um i i have heard this a lot with amongst family members in india a lot mm. that mental health issues occur when the devil or a departed soul enters the body <laughs> yes. i think this is going away but it still exists it, it still exists it's been there for yeah. centuries like mm-hmm. so we on we when we learn about psychology about mental health when we are training we are also taught to um you know keep in mind the cultural and the religious background of the people who are going to come to you every um region of india has its own set of cultural and religious views and ideas and attitudes so we have to keep that in mind so you might find um a person from the um muslim family coming that you know um my child both my uh, feet are not working uh to humne jhada tha usko mm-hmm. okay we went to health uh, faith healer humne usko jhada tha thode din theek raha wapas ho gaya okay um, when we go for a christian so they'll be like you know um she was talking in a different way her eyes were popping out you know she was disheveled mm-hmm. and you know we uh, we called um I, i may be wrong i may be using the wrong terms so uh, but you know we called a you know a priest home and you know um exorcism kara okay that's that's how it is done even in hindu families uh ke humne um uh wo panaya kya kehte hain so there are stones that you can wear and ring karwaya you know all that is there we have to respect it we should respect it but what happens is that the basis of your mental illness should be clear yeah. it is an illness at the end of the day mm-hmm. there are chemical imbalances there are traumatic incidents that are leading or there are uh, there is a uh, you know a uh, hostile environment that a person is seeing that is leading to the illness religion can play a very strong supporting role in it supporting in the sense in a positive way it's good to have faith religion spirituality that good but when it just shakes the basis of mental illness because of which your illness is actually increasing and not decreasing that is where we have to set a foot 
that you know this is these are the facts aapne wo karwaya you tried it it didn't work so let us try my way let us try the scientific way and let's see what results it reach so we have to be very respectful when it comes to you know devil or departed soul entering the body because mata a gayi hai and all that we see videos so we we may have also noticed it in the house right mm-hmm. so what families may we see it so, but we have to respect it but we have to set foot where we feel that you know they are going away from the basis of mental illness and they're just focusing mm-hmm. on that so yeah. yes this is a myth Mm-hmm. other people might debate it but as a mental health professional i believe that it's a myth but i'm going to respect every religion and spiritual um, mm-hmm. you know gurus and schools mm-hmm. but for me mm-hmm. it's a myth yeah okay so on that note uh, i'm done with my list and um, you know there are a lot of other things uh, other myths actually that are there still present um and you know with that being said thank you chavi for joining us and if you have any last thoughts that you would like to share with us for our world mental health day please we would love to hear that from you um like the theme this is mental health for all um as an individual we can make a huge difference it starts with us so like you mentioned talk about it openly listen to people um when you feel that you know i might get judgmental i might not be able to help them you know tell that person that you know i'm here for you but i will not be able to help you you need professional help that support is also very important so as an individual start from you don't so we have this thing it's 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 for every kind of issue any any issue with the society that you know koi aur kar dega main nahi kar paun you know i am okay i am safe so i am fine so no you can also be a victim or you can also some day you know be vulnerable to a mental illness so as much as you can try to encourage help motivate spread awareness about mental health that's what my message for all our viewers today is yes. that's wonderful this was such a such an enriching talk and so informative i'm taking a lot away from this 30 minute conversation that we had and if you know if anyone this video will get saved to everyone watching us and Chavi is there. If you have any other questions for sure. her, feel free to um, message her. We'll leave the email details and everything in the description, and you can even message us, and we'll forward your questions to her. But thank you, everyone, for joining in, and thank you, Chavi, and happy World Mental Health Day. Let's talk about it. Let's spread awareness about it. Yes. Thank you so much, Anushka, and yes, happy uh, World Mental Health Day to all. give your mental health priority as much as you give your physical health when you balance both of them you're going to um be able to embrace all emotions cope with anything that comes to you perfect all right bye thank you bye. everyone bye to you later bye bye bye